Our universe is large, very large. It's simply beyond what we can comprehend. But if you were to go as far out into space as you can imagine, what would you encounter? Would there be a limit to how far you could go? Or could you travel a limitless distance? Would you eventually return to your starting point? Or would you continue to traverse space that you had never encountered before? In other words, does the universe have an edge? And if so, where is it? What is beyond the edge of the universe? Join us in today's episode as we unlock all the biggest mysteries of the universe. The universe as told is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. Trying to truly comprehend how large the universe really is seems like an impossible task, like an ant trying to understand how far New York is from California. But since the universe makes us up and we exist as part of the universe, we owe it to ourselves to make the most sense of it that we can with our limited experiences. And to do that, we just have to build up a little bit at a time. Let's begin by considering local space. Assume that the distance between Earth and the Sun, known as one astronomical unit, is one centimeter instead of its actual 93 million miles. In all of human history, mind you, we have physically traveled an imperceptibly small fraction then of that one centimeter. You can think of a scale model solar system in your room, your neighborhood, and your town. On that scale, Jupiter would be five centimeters from the Sun. Keep moving off, say, to the right, and imagining the relative distances. Saturn would be 10 centimeters from the Sun, Uranus 19 centimeters from the Sun, and Neptune 30 centimeters from the Sun. Little old Pluto would typically be about 40 centimeters from the Sun. However, on this scale, the physical diameter of the solar system is far larger than that. The outer edge of the Oort cloud, the enormous shell of perhaps a trillion comets, would lie 10 football fields away. And we have thus far traveled a tiny, almost invisible fraction of that original one centimeter. And that's just our solar system. The nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is four times farther away than the outer shell of the Oort cloud. The gap between even the nearest stars would be staggeringly large. The actual distance to Proxima Sen is 4.2 light years, meaning that light, the fastest thing there is, takes 4.2 years to travel from that star to our eyes. We can take quantum leaps upward in universal scale too. The Milky Way galaxy is one of at least 100 billion galaxies in the cosmos. The diameter of the Milky Way's bright disk, which we are in, is at least 100,000 light years. The most distant photons from our own galaxy have been traveling to us for one third of the length of human history. And a little like nesting dolls, we can follow cosmic structures out to larger and larger scales. Our local group of galaxies, as Edwin Hubble termed it back in the 1930s, contains at least 55 galaxies in a sphere spanning about 10 million light years. Local group members include our nearby friends, the Andromeda Galaxy and the Triangulum Galaxy. Countless small groups of galaxies are even farther away, and if we travel some 55 million light years, we get to the center of the largest cluster of galaxies in our cosmic space, the Virgo Cluster. This group includes some 1,300 galaxies of all types, but larger and more massive groups of galaxies lie far more distantly from us, nearly countless numbers of them. When we get up to the largest cosmic structures known, we can talk about superclusters and walls of galaxy clusters. Examples include Laniakea, which we belong to, a structure that stretches some 500 million light years across. And there are dozens of examples of other large structures. So how large is the universe? The blunt answer is, we don't really know. But one thing we are certain about is that the universe has an edge, not in space, but in time. The Big Bang, the best theory of the origin and evolution of the universe, tells us that at some point in the distant past, the universe was hotter, denser, and expanding much more rapidly than it is today. The stars and galaxies we see throughout the universe in all directions only exist as they do because the universe has expanded and cooled, allowing gravitation to pull matter into clumps. Over billions of years, gravitational growth has fueled generations of stars and the formation of galaxies. 
leading to the universe we see today. Everywhere we look, in all directions, we see a universe that tells us the same cosmic story. But part of that story is the fact that the farther away we look, the farther we're looking back in time. The universe hasn't been around, forming stars and growing galaxies, forever. According to the Big Bang and the observations that support it, the universe had a beginning. In the early stages after the Big Bang, the universe was filled with a variety of ingredients, and it began with an incredibly rapid initial expansion rate. These two factors, the initial expansion rate and the gravitational effects of everything in the universe, are the two head-to-head -head players in the ultimate cosmic race. On the one hand, the expansion works to push everything apart, stretching the fabric of space and driving the galaxies and the large-scale structure of the universe apart. But on the other hand, gravitation attracts all forms of matter and energy, working to pull the universe back together. Normal matter, dark matter, dark energy, radiation, neutrinos, black holes, gravitational waves and more all play a role in the expanding universe. The expansion rate began large, but has been decreasing as the universe expands. There's a simple reason for this. As the universe expands, its volume increases, and therefore the energy density goes down. As the density drops, so does the expansion rate. Light that was once too far away from us to be seen can now catch up to us. This fact carries with it a huge implication for the universe. Over time, galaxies that were once too distant to be revealed to us will spontaneously come into view. It may have been 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang occurred, but with the expansion of the universe, there are objects as far away as 46.1 billion light years whose light is just reaching us. All told, if we were to add up all the galaxies that exist within this volume of space, we'd find there are a whopping two trillion of them within our observable universe. As enormous as this number is, it's still finite, and our observations don't reveal an edge in space in any direction we look. The amount of time that's passed since the Big Bang, the speed of light, and the ingredients in our universe determine the limit of what's observable. Any farther than that, and even something moving at the speed of light since the moment of the hot Big Bang will not have had sufficient time to reach us. Put simply, anything beyond this limit is unobservable to us because not enough time has elapsed since the birth of the universe for light from these remote regions to reach our telescopes. But just like the familiar horizon seen by sailors on the ocean, this cosmological horizon is not some real, physical boundary. And as the ocean stretches beyond the sailor's horizon, so too does space stretch beyond our observable universe. There's no reason why there can't be galaxies at these extremely large distances. They're just invisible to us, no matter how powerful our telescopes are. But knowing the universe goes on beyond 45 billion light years still doesn't tell us whether it's finite or infinite. We can only make inferences based on the laws of physics as we know them and the things we can measure within our observable universe. In principle, we could live in a finite universe, provided that three-dimensional empty space is geometrically curved in a particular way, a distinct possibility according to Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. But if the universe has what's known as positive curvature, it would be like the curved surface of a beach ball, but rather than a 2D surface, it's 3D space. It is finite. If you were living in this flattened version of the cosmos, you wouldn't need an infinite amount of paint to cover your 2D universe. Yet there is no boundary or edge to the surface itself. In contrast, a negatively curved universe would be a higher dimensional version of a Pringle, curving upwards along one axis and downwards along the other, while a flat universe would resemble a piece of paper. Both of these versions would stretch out infinitely. Cosmologists have tried to measure the large-scale curvature of space over the past few decades, and the most recent results combined with theoretical arguments seem to indicate that we live in a geometrically flat universe. On the one hand, that's convenient as our brains aren't very good at imagining large-scale space curvature. Even here, we've had to describe our 3D universe in 2D terms. On the other hand, this means that our universe is infinitely large, 
and that our observable universe, the part within our cosmological horizon, is only an infinitesimally small fraction of an unimaginably large whole. In case you were wondering how our infinite, boundless universe is able to expand, return once again to our 2D analogy. If you saw the grid size on a piece of graph paper growing, you would justifiably conclude that the paper is expanding. If the paper was so large that you couldn't see the edge, you'd still draw the same conclusion even though the piece of paper could also be infinitely large. The same is true for an infinite universe. After all, infinity times two is still infinity. However, there are good theoretical reasons to believe that our entire universe, whether finite or infinite, is even larger than that. The hot Big Bang might mark the beginning of the observable universe as we know it, but it doesn't mark the birth of space and time itself. Before the Big Bang, the universe underwent a period of cosmic inflation. According to inflation, instead of being filled with matter and radiation, and instead of being hot, the universe would rather transition into that state from a pre-existing one, a sparse, empty state where space was filled not with quanta, but with a form of energy inherent to space itself. Similar to today's dark energy, but billions upon billions upon billions of times stronger, this phase stretched the universe to a state that was indistinguishable from flat, removed any pre-existing high-energy relics by inflating them away, and created a uniform set of conditions that were the same everywhere, with a nearly scale-invariant spectrum of imperfections or density fluctuations superimposed atop the uniform background. Thus, unlike the modern expanding universe, which has grown to an observable size of 46.1 billion light-years over the span of 13.8 billion years, an inflationary universe grows much, much larger in tiny periods of time. During inflation, the scale of the universe doubles in all three dimensions, length, width, and depth. With every tiny fraction of a second, something like 10 to the power of negative 35 seconds that elapses. After 10 to the power of negative 34 seconds have elapsed, the universe has doubled in size 10 times over. After 10 to the power of negative 33 seconds, it has doubled 100 times over. After 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, it's doubled 1,000 times over. These numbers are important because it only takes about $300 doublings to go from something that's smaller than the Planck scale or the minimum scale at which physics makes sense to something that's larger than the entire observable universe. What inflation then gives us, maddeningly to many seeking to understand the universe, is a story that only describes the very few final doublings that occurred, because any information that occurred prior to it automatically gets erased or expanded away to unobservably large scales by the nature of inflation itself. This point is not often sufficiently appreciated by laypersons and astrophysicists alike. Inflation gives us a story and a framework for understanding how the hot Big Bang was set up and why it began with the initial conditions that it did. These conditions include a spatially flat universe with the same temperature and uniform density everywhere, with no leftover ultra-high energy relics, with an almost scale invariant but slightly tilted with a preference for large-scale spectrum of initial seed fluctuations that are adiabatic in nature, including fluctuations that appear on scales larger than the cosmic horizon at any given point in time, where inflation led to a hot Big Bang that has a maximum temperature that was at least a few orders of magnitude lower than Planck scale temperatures. All of this comes from the final few hundred doublings of the end stages of cosmic inflation and is independent of what happened prior to those doublings. This leaves us not with a knowledge gap, but rather a knowledge cliff where whatever occurred prior to these final fractions of a second of inflation is fundamentally unknowable, as its history has been erased from the parts of the universe that are observable now and forever into the future by us. Inflation could have lasted for less than 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, or for one second, or for trillions of years, and the universes that we would observe today would look no different in any way between these three scenarios. There is a reason that many theoretical physicists talk about the universe 
as likely being finite rather than infinite, however. And the reason is this. Inflationary spacetimes, within the framework of the laws of physics as we understand them, have a property that says they cannot be past, time-like, complete. In other words, if you ask the question, could inflation have gone on for an infinite amount of time prior to our universe emerging? The answer that comes back is no. Something must have preceded the inflationary phase and allowed it to begin. Almost everything is unknown about that state, including whether it had a moment of origin or was eternal to the past. However, we can state that the inflationary phase could only have lasted for a finite amount of time before giving rise to what we identify as our hot big bang, and that hot big bang occurred 13.8 billion years ago and has given rise to an observable universe that is 46.1 billion light years in radius, where the unobservable universe is likely much larger. If the universe has always existed, if its birth occurred an infinite amount of time ago, or if it was born with infinite size, then the unobservable universe must be infinite. If none of those things are true, then the universe is forbidden to be infinite, and instead, must be finite. As unfathomably large as an inflationary spacetime that gave rise to a multiverse of uncountably large numbers of hot big bangs may be, unless the universe were born infinite in spatial extent, or has existed for an infinite amount of time, it must still be finite in extent. Regardless of whatever conditions existed that gave rise to inflation, and regardless of how long inflation endured for before our hot big bang began, those remain the only ways to have a physical universe that's infinite in spatial extent. However, whether it's finite or infinite, based on the evidence that's even in principle observable to us, may be a question whose answer is fundamentally beyond science's ability to answer. That's all the information that we have for today. Don't forget to thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. Your support motivates us to continue creating more and more quality videos. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.